Hi, I'm Eli Prinson from HybridVocalTechnique.com. Uh, today's video is going to be on releasing jaw tension. Reasons that we would have jaw tension, uh, some strategies and tips for you to, to help start letting go of that, um, and uh, all the crazy things that can happen and how you can get rid of it. I'll show you the way that I got rid of a lot of jaw tension because it was um, one of the many things I had working against me as a, um, a student of singing in the beginning. Okay, so as all of you know, I have a love-hate relationship with in-ears, so let me put the headphones on. Much more comfortable that way. Okay. <laughs> all right, so jaw tension. When, uh, when we sing and we start, usually in our comfortable range, this isn't a problem. For some people, it is, even in a comfortable range. And I'll, I'll give you an explanation of what I'm talking about, okay? So a comfortable range down here. Not even, I mean, just in almost even in the low range, right? All right. Well, for me, that feels quite comfortable and quite easy. Um, it only goes up to middle C from C below middle C. Um, for some very low bass voices, that might be tough, okay? Um, and this is what would probably happen if they were straining and they had not developed any range in their chest voice yet, okay? And so just imagine someone with a voice way down here. Eli, I cannot sing a C middle C. Okay, that, that type of a voice. Okay, so they might have a lot of tension in their jaw like this. Me, -yo, yo, me, -yo, yo, me. And, and really be straining right there, okay? Now, I remember this. I remember this. When I first started taking lessons, and many of you that have uh, that studied HVT and know about <laughs> every, all the training and, and all the history behind it, um, and people that have seen a lot of my YouTube videos know about uh, my struggles with the eval um, when I was a, a young student of singing. It was so bad. I hated the eval so much that I would actually um, rewrite my lyrics to where I didn't have to sing an E because I preferred an A or an A or an A. I hated the eval because for some reason, which I now know, I used to um, jump my jaw forward and uh, from when I would sing an E and my voice would, would want to crack, it would feel very unstable, okay? So what jaw jutting is, is it, when you, you start to sing an E and you, e you just stick your jaw out and you can feel um, tension and even pain in the hinge, all right? The hinge of the jaw. So if you were singing this first octave and this happened to you, I'll go to the three quarters here for you. That is jaw jutting, okay? Another reason people would do this would be um, living in uh, apartments or in places where they didn't want people to hear them sing. So they would start replacing, um, instead of keeping good compression and chord closure, they might... Um, try to hit higher notes with, with more air to be quiet because they're afraid of bothering others. And they would do something like this. Those of you that uh, do that understand what I'm talking about, okay? That, I mean, it would just go on and on. Trying to hit, you know, uh, hit note, higher notes with a lot of air because you don't want to bother nobody or you got, you know, really mean neighbors or whatever. I've been there. Okay. But check it out. John Titchen. So, uh, right now, top note is only, um, you know, the D above middle C. Me, -a -o, me, -a -o, me. So I'm only going E, A, O, E, A, O, E. Now, what if we... Uh, stayed on an ah, ah, just a straight ah vowel, and I started to move my jaw side to side. Ah, 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 ah. I want you to try that right now with me, just to see 
what that feels like. All right, just loosey goosey, as loose as you can get it. La. Okay, now if that's hard, even down here at the bottom, what you'll probably see if you're looking in a mirror and do yourself a favor, it's an old school uh, training tool that I, I've used since the eighties because that's, you know, when I started training, but using a mirror so you can see the things that you can't feel, whether they are right or wrong. Remember that. Okay. So if I'm doing la, you don't have to follow the tempo. Ah, you don't have to do that. Just move it around randomly. Ah, okay. If it starts getting stuck, it's going to do like this. Ah, and that means that you have what? Jaw tension. Okay. The higher you go, um, if this is a condition for you, or if this is an issue for you, the higher you go, the worse it will be. Okay. I remember this vividly. Ah, ah, so I had to do this. This was one of the techniques that my teacher, uh, had me do. Okay because I locked up, I jutted everything. It was terrible. Okay. Um, so we would do side to sides and also, uh, small no's and small yeses, not a, enough to where it will activate, uh, the digrastic muscle groups or, um, on either side or on the neck, you know, we don't want to activate that, but just a little bit enough movement to where you're not engaging or, um, having these muscles engage, but that you can, um, test out and look in the mirror and see if you have, if you have some freedom or if you can get a little more freedom in there and not be so locked up. Okay. So then we would start it again. Ah, e kind of weird. Uh, those of you that are like me that have uh, trouble chewing gum and walking at the same time, it's going to be even challenge more challenging, right? Okay. So that was the first step. All right. Uh, is using this and move going side to side. All right. Then we would also, um, if we were doing resonant, uh, tracking exercises or humming, um, so just breathing into the nose, um, trying to release the jaw with the tongue down in a natural position. A little bit of a grin to get that um, resonance popped up top. Remember that in the open throat video, why we would do all these things? Okay, so we started off humming normal. And go for that nice, bright, metallic, ringing, um, buzzing sound, right? A sensation up in the mask and in the head. But then he's like, okay, Eli, are you attention to your jaw? And I used to be. And so he would be like, all right, now, once you imagine you just took a bite of something, then I said, Hey, do a, do some humming. All right. So now you're chewing and doing some humming and you want to try to relax the activity of chewing, uh, and remain resonant and placed. Okay. Used to be a lot harder, um, <laughs> than it is for me now. It was almost impossible. Mm -hmm. And then switch to side to side, go right-handed, go left-handed. So long story short is that you're uh, moving the jaw around while you're creating the sound and um, trying to not remain locked. So we would do the side to side on various vowels. Oh, we just to try to, to let go of that thing, you know, because I had a lot of, I had everything working against me. I was somebody that everyone said, Eli, you got no business singing at all. Just get back behind the drum set and give up on that dream. And I just couldn't do that. So 
had a lot of things to work out, had a lot of, um, a lot of things to fix, right? Okay. So as the voice goes higher, as the voice goes higher, like I told you, I had a problem with the E. The E made my jaw jut out. Even when I was no longer at my parents' home, um, you know, and I would be practicing, I, I, I would practice in the car. And that's what I would really recommend uh, for a lot of you people. Find that vocal training sanctuary, if you will, the place where you can practice and, you know, fully do what you got to do, support a project, um, add the necessary amount of volume. Um, so that you can get the, the, the results and not be uh, building up uh, muscle memory that's not good for you by doing things incorrectly and not uh, improving, okay? So even, so I like, I, I'd get in the car, I'd go, all right, I'm gonna go take a drive and, and practice. This is when I first started. Um, I had built up that habit from trying to be quiet. So then I, I was still doing it. And it's like, why am I still doing that when I'm able to get loud in the car? but it was because I had built up some bad memory, all right? So usually practice makes perfect. Well, that per, uh, practice was not perfect. It was building up bad memory, so I had to retrain that. So what we did was uh, called shush. It's just like shush, like shut your mouth, shh, okay? So now, instead of sticking that and it, the higher I went, the harder it was. So now I can take it through there and relax the hinge, relax everything and not jut anymore. Okay. That used to be impossible for me. Okay. So it was little by little. This, the hands, the sense of touch will help you to, to get rid of so many tensions. It will blow your mind. Okay. So the chewing, right? So chewing on the humming and uh, side to side on uh, the vowels. The little tiny bit of neck movement so we can release everything that was getting bound up, right? So then on the, um, uh, relaxation response exercises. All right. This made, uh, made it, um, a little more challenging because we had to go from head voice and, um, descend all the way through the vocal registers, uh, and relax from, you know, from the support system, from the chin to relax everything in here, uh, doing old yawn size. Then I had to make sure I was loose doing those too, right? Because I used to strain into those and do them like that, all right? So I had to uh, had to do it like this. Ah, with that little bit of movement. Ah, to release that hinge. That hinge wanted to activate. It wanted to activate. It wanted to lock me up when I would sing higher, okay? So the, so the, the exercise... Now is so much more free where I used to turn my, I actually would turn my head like this and stick my, my chin out and, and lock up everything, you know, and use, use every muscle other than what I'm supposed to use. I would activate a multitude of musculature that did nothing but basically, um, work against me. So why do we do that? If this is happening to you, why does that happen? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. Until we learn how to properly support the voice and start to eliminate, identify, okay? Identify and eliminate the tensions, we can't expect them to go away. We've had uh, a lifetime of attempting to learn how to sing maybe with, without good instruction or any instruction and uh, never realize some of the habits by not seeing for ourselves or having someone point them out to us, we've built up these habits. So what's going on is the jaw. If the jaw is tense, the hinge is tense. If the, the, the under the chin, this muscle group, this muscle group, all this stuff, all these things, neck tension, you know, you're doing this with your body or turning to the side, all the things I actually used to do. These are all the wrong muscle groups 
trying to help you, but they're working against you because they're trying to help you support. They're trying to help you support. So you've built up bad habits over the years by trying your hardest. It's not your fault. It's just that you're not supporting from the right place. And all these muscles have, have, have decided, hey, man, we got to help this guy or this girl hit these notes because they just can't do it. So we've created all of, you know, activated all the wrong muscles in an effort to support. So when you learn to support properly from below with good lower support and then go through and make a list like I did, okay? We have technology now. I know we got cameras and stuff. This is old school, you know? Um, and we got uh, Word documents and stuff like that. And in the old days or the way I did it, honestly, um, uh, in the 80s, it was with a mirror just like this and a spiral notebook and a pen. And my teacher made me identify every tension that and everything I was doing that, that I shouldn't be doing. He, well, he told me, and then I wrote it down. And then every week we, we would work on eliminating one of those tensions until we were marking them off one at a time and they were gone. And there were a lot of them. Okay. Um, you know, turning to the side, the neck, the jaw, the jutting, the, you know, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. All right. So long story short, learning good support, learning how to support well, uh, to support the voice. That's where the power comes from. That's where the control comes from. Um, we have to eliminate the tensions. Um, a great way to do is um, with the senses, the senses, the sense of touch, right? This was another one uh, before we, before I conclude this video, it was, uh, it was called the thinker, like the statue, <laughs> right? So I would sing like this, you know, when we would go through, um, you know, any a simple in do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do, la, 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 la. We would go through that and I would have to monitor for that jaw tension. E And I used to be able to feel it come in and this come out. So every time that would happen and I was using my mirror, eventually the jutting went away and the jaw tension went away. Now, to wrap this all up, okay, going through all of the registers, uh, uh, start slowly. If, if you have these tensions, you, everything you ha can identify, okay, make a list and take your time. Okay, you created, you had a lifetime to create these habits. So don't expect them to go away overnight, but create a new habit in 21 days. That's science, okay? So... If you're aware of it and you're watching and you're using the scent of sight, you know, sound, it, it sounds bad, it's strangled and touch, you can feel it activate. So make an effort to deactivate whatever is coming in, correct? So the final step, okay, we have, we want to start slowly in a comfortable range and then build up semitone by semitone by a whole note, uh, the, the, the ability on all the vowels to release, okay? Same thing happens on the percussives and on, um, you know, going fast. Okay, so speed, speed drills, um, I used to not be able to do because I, I would, and, and my teacher would be like, okay, uh, Eli, uh, make that, make the motion without the voice. And he's like, okay. You can physically do this. So what what is going on when you add that uh, stream of air and the vibration of the vocal folds? Why? What does that have to do with your jaw? And of course, I was just like, you know, you know, it's easy for you to say you've been doing it for 50 years, you know, which some of that's true, but, but he was right. So he's like, okay, 
think into how that feels. Just doing that. And then, and then add in the voice. Okay. So that was another thing. Speed drills, release, release, release. Uh, going through the registers. Ma, ma, with the jaw moving around. Ma, 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 moving it, moving it around. Okay. And then the final, um, uh, the final step in, in that equation is uh, actual uh, words, okay? Because they can be quite different. All right, so um, like uh, if, uh, we, <laughs> if we did like a little uh, Larry and Moe and Curly are the best three stooges, like add some, sen some sentences to your uh, scales, all right? You know, Larry and Moe and Curly are the best three stooges. Okay, my students know all these crazy sentences that we use in HVT, all right? So if jaw tension came in there, what would happen? Larry and Moe and Curly are the best to do that. Or if I started, started doing all this crazy stuff, you know, I would know I had a problem. So what do I got to do? Break out of the mirror, check it out. Maybe put the hand here. Larry and Moe and Curly are the best three stooges. Okay, right? Now, what if I'm, uh, you know, this is a whole nother topic, but just a preview for you. What if I'm shooting all that air out? All right. Well, then you go to the rib cage in the hand. Larry and Moe and Curly are the best three stooges and start to control that airflow. All right. That's a whole nother topic. But anyway, that's today's video. If you liked and enjoyed the content, please hit like. Please hit subscribe. Let me know about it in the comment section. If you're interested in vocal training, you'd like to learn a uh, hybrid vocal technique and completely unleash the full potential of your voice in range, power, quality, stamina, endurance, everything, check out the uh, links in the description box. I'd love to be your vocal coach, whether that's at home with a home study program or live on Skype or Zoom, okay? Have a wonderful night or a wonderful day whenever you're watching this. And take care.